thanks for joining me today. So today we are going to look at the clarinet. Now the clarinet is a woodwind instrument. Um, so we're going to kind of look at how to put the clarinet together, what it sounds like, and of course some fun facts because really who doesn't need fun facts in their life? Okay, so we're going to start with the very first part of the clarinet, which is the reed. This is a reed. The reed is actually from a plant called the Arundo donax, or is called the giant king. So essentially this is just king. Now you'll notice that it's a pretty small little thing and that's totally normal. If you have other woodwind instruments like the saxophone, then your reed is going to look a lot bigger. But because it's the clarinet, it's going to be smaller. Now normally when you start to play the clarinet, you put this in your mouth to kind of moisten it and get it ready because that's what helps it vibrate. But because I'm going to put this clarinet together, I'm actually not going to get this moist yet. We're going to wait until I'm ready for that part. So I'm going to put it away for now. All right, so one really cool thing about the clarinet is that it is very similar to the recorder. Um, it, similar in the sense that you've got the same or similar fingerings. So a couple of the, most of the fingerings are the same. Um, so if the recorder was something you played before and you really liked it and you had a lot of success with it and you're really not sure what you want to do for band, the clarinet is a great next step to it because it's similar to it. There are a lot of buttons, so there will be a couple of differences, but you'll find that once you get really comfortable on it, you're going to not worry about those buttons. You're going to know what all of them do, and clarinet's really quite a bit of fun. So this is what it looks like. Um, the thing that I find hardest about the clarinet is the amount of pieces. It kind of looks like a giant puzzle, and <laughs> you're absolutely right if that's what you're thinking. It does kind of look like a giant puzzle. So, I mean, before you even take take the instrument and put it together, it might be a good idea to maybe take out one part at a time and try putting it back in so you kind of remember where everything goes and, and how it fits into the case. Um, I, I have done this a few times, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip that step for today, but that's definitely something that you could do. So I'm going to start by taking out the longest joint, which would be this one. And it's a good one to start with because of what it's got here on the back, and it's kind of a thumb, a thumb joint, and that's that's where your thumb would rest, and it's kind of a, a good spot to start because if you see that, you know, okay, well, that's where my that's where my right hand's going to go. So you're going to grab the next longest joint, and you're going to very carefully, and it's hard not to do this without squishing the keys. You don't want to squish the keys too much because you might bend something, but you're going to very carefully just twist it in there. Now, I'm actually gonna get up and show this to you because it's hard to see from back here. There are two bars right here and they need to join. So what I'm gonna do is I'm turning it and now my two little bars here actually kind of fit together. So as long as those are lined up, you'll be good to go. And now I've actually got both of my hands. I got my left hand here at the top and my right hand here at the bottom. But obviously this is still not done. So I'm going to take the next obvious part, which would be the bell. And this one, you don't have to worry about squishing anything. There's no keys on it, so you just hold it. And you're very gently going to kind of twist it on. There. And so now I've got the bell. So almost the whole puzzle here is, is, is made. Now you're going to take this little neck joint and you're going to just squish it on here at the top and finally you're going to grab your mouthpiece which looks like this you're going to take the ligature off what's a ligature it's this little metal part and what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen these screws I'm going to loosen the screws pull it right off and so this is the only part of my mouthpiece I have right now, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to squish it right up here at the top. And now my clarinet is almost fully assembled, okay? This is where the reed comes back into play and my ligature. Now, when you have this ligature, it, it, it is metal, 
Try not to drop it because if you drop it and it gets a little bent, it might not get back on your clarinet the same way. And you really want it to sit snugly so it holds your, your reed. So what you're gonna do with your reed is you're going to stick it in your mouth and just get it moist, okay? Now, normally you would put it in for like a minute or two as you're, as you're getting your clarinet set up, you would have it in your mouth and you're just kind of fiddling with it. But because um, I'm, I'm trying to show you here quickly, I'm just gonna get the reed wet really quickly. And uh, now it's, it's wet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my ligature off and I'm going to try to put my reed, so it's kind of just on there, because watch what happens if I don't have a reed on there. It will not play, watch. It, it's impossible to play it. It needs this to vibrate. So I'm gonna put my reed back on my mouthpiece, and I might end up turning it around because I just, it's kind of hard to do it backwards. And then what I'm going to do is I, I need to tighten these screws again, otherwise the reed doesn't sit snugly on it. So I tighten the little screws on the ligature, and now my clarinet is fully assembled. All right. So um, before I, I start playing for you here, a um, couple of fun facts, because who doesn't like fun facts? A clarinet player is called a clarinetist. All right. Now. Um, you can see these all over the place. You can see them in an orchestra. Um, you can see these in concert bands, in marching bands. They're also a beautiful solo instrument. If you are a watcher of SpongeBob SquarePants, then Squidward is a clarinet player. So if you've always wondered what Squidward plays, now you know. So you too could be a Squidward. Wouldn't that be fun? Okay. Another fun fact about this, um, these clarinets, well not specifically these ones, but clarinets have roots that go all the way back to ancient Greece and ancient Egypt and even the Middle East and Europe. Um, one such instrument is called the albaca, okay? And it was made from an animal horn. Um, the albaca looks nothing like a clarinet, but that's kind of where its ancestry lies and the albaca looks something like this. Pretty cool, hey? Now, believe it or not, if you were to type in an albaca, and it's spelled A-L-B-O-K-A, -A, you would actually find that people still make these nowadays. I had no idea until I looked this up. I thought that was really cool. So if you want to look up an albaca, be my guest, because that is really cool. All right. So now I've got my clarinet made and I'm going to show you a little bit of what it sounds like. Here we go. <laughs> sound has got a beautiful higher sound it's not my forte but I do love the clarinet that has a special place in my heart so once again the clarinet it's great if you love recorder and you go or you're going into band and you need to pick something this is a great next step after that if you pick clarinet you are gonna love it it's lots of fun and uh, yeah I think you'll enjoy it so thank you very much for joining me See you next time and stay safe. Thanks guys, bye.